Hi everyone, it's Katrina. Number 10. Vampires Against Communism The Philippines is an amazing country spread out across 7,000 islands. The former Spanish colony has over 175 local languages and a myriad of unique cultural traditions. One of the more unusual cultural features of the Philippines is the belief in a vampire-like creature known as the Aswang. According to local lore, the Aswang feeds not only on blood, but upon the organs and phlegm of human beings. It will eat the unborn child of pregnant women and it will transform into a giant pig or a vulture the size of a man. Whatever bizarre shape it takes, it's all about eating pieces of its victims and sucking their blood. It's like a vampire, yet somehow infinitely worse. In the 1950s, the CIA was a wacky place. Some of the tactics they used during the Cold War seem like they belong in the plot of a terrible B-movie, in the Philippines, the CIA used the superstitions of the locals to scare communist rebels. They would set up fake scenes, making it look as if a vampire had just feasted on victims. Members of the CIA would puncture a dead person's neck, making it look like they had holes from vampire teeth in their flesh. Then they would hang them from a tree, drain them of their blood, and leave them there for the rebels to discover. When the communist rebels found the victims drained of their blood, they assumed it was the Aswang and lost their will to fight. It was a disturbing psychological tactic that might have been even scarier than the vampire itself. The belief in the Aswang goes back to time unknown. Jordan Clark, an expert in Philippine mythology, says the Aswang is a little different depending on which region of the Philippines you're in. The one thing that appears to be the same is that the Aswang is seen as a bringer of evil. The Aswang was a thing to be feared even before the Spanish arrived. In 1589, Spanish friar Juan de Plasencia documented devils and demons in Philippine folklore. The friar wrote of a monster called Oswang, which the locals believed was a sorcerer. Locals told stories of how the Oswang, or Aswang, murdered men and consumed their flesh. The man behind the ghoulish recreations in the 1950s was Edward Geary Lansdale. In World War II, he had been recruited to the Office of Strategic Services, or the OSS. This was the precursor to the CIA. Because of his knowledge in the advertising field, he was used in psychological operations. After the war, Lansdale arrived in the Philippines to help combat the communist threat. Lansdale and his team studied the superstitions of the local people living in communist areas. They then chose the most frightening and believable one to use in their psychological warfare. A double agent would go into the camps and spread rumors about vampire sightings. Shortly after, the rebels would find a supposed vampire victim strung up from a tree. And now for number nine, but first, it's shout out time. I want to give a big thank you to Jen Geisenhoff for the generous super thanks. Thank you so much. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe to join the Origins Explained family. Number nine, irradiating China. Douglas MacArthur was general of the US Army during World War II. He fought in the First World War and then continued to serve in the second. His military career was six decades long. After the victory against Japan in 1945, he was one of the top military figures in the United States. But he wasn't finished fighting yet. Victory against Japan was achieved, but there was more work to do. Douglas soon found himself in the Korean War, which began in 1951. The Korean War would be America's first true proxy war in the fight against communism. Soon after America entered the war, the entire Korean peninsula was taken. If the war had ceased just then, North Korea more than likely would have never existed. But China intervened, the American forces were pushed back, and Korea was split in half. Douglas MacArthur didn't like what was happening. His plan was to create an irradiated border between Korea and China to prevent China's communist influence. Douglas proposed a carpet bombing of the corridor that connected Korea to China using approximately 34 nuclear bombs. He also wanted to nuke around 50 Chinese cities near the Korean border. The idea behind the nuclear weapons was to create a barren land of death between Korea and China. It would have prevented China from interfering with Korea by creating a nuclear passageway. It wasn't just Douglas who had this idea either. 
He based much of his strategy on a list of targets proposed by the Pentagon in 1940. The nuclear plan never unfolded, but it was on the table and seriously considered by top army officials. Number 8. Nazis and the Vril Society Edward Bulver Lytton published his novella Vril, The Power of the Coming Race in 1871. Edward was a literary man and a politician in the decades before World War I and the formation of the Nazi Party. He was also the one who coined the phrase, the pen is mightier than the sword. In his book, the opening line is one of the most famous opening lines in history. The book starts with, it was a dark and stormy night. Edward clearly had a lot of influence in the world at the end of the 19th century, but his book had more influence than anyone could have possibly imagined. Edward's novella is about an American who stumbles upon a secret race of underground humans. These underground humans descended from an ancient and mysterious group known as the Aryans. The Aryans had transcended war, democracy, and envy. Using a magical power they called Vril, the Aryans had established a perfect utopia underground. This might sound familiar. If it does, it's because it was what the Nazis believed in. The book was so popular that Victorian-era mystics began to tell stories about the power of Vril. Cultists around the world became obsessed with a secret society of underground Aryans. One of the groups of cultists who took the story literally was the Tula Society in Germany. The Tula Society was a group of lunatics who believed in Aryan supremacy and underground humans. They backed Adolf Hitler in his rise to power. The Tula Society and the cultists from the Vril Society were believed to be largely responsible for the rise of the Nazi Party. What you don't read often in the history books is that World War II was fought against maniacs with some outrageous ideology. Most ordinary Germans had no idea what the Tula Society even was. But Hitler and the others in charge definitely did. And it's not over yet, either. Vrilology is something that still exists in the shadowy circles of the world. Some think the Tula Society is still out there, controlling everything in secret. Number 7. Super Soldiers U.S. intelligence has shown that China has conducted multiple human tests on members of their army in an attempt to develop super soldiers. Super soldiers like Captain America in the Marvel movies. It's not just China trying to biologically engineer soldiers with enhanced capabilities. Other countries are testing it out, too. Russia recently claimed that Ukraine is creating their own super soldiers to beat them in the current war that they've created in biological laboratories. John Ratcliffe, the director of national intelligence, was the man behind the shocking claim. John wrote that Beijing has no boundaries in its pursuit of power. They are supposedly testing the newest technology on their own People's Liberation Army. Just before John made the claim about super soldiers, American scholars published a paper discussing China's biotechnology on the battlefield. These scholars wrote that China was already messing around with gene editing technology. The technology would be used to tweak the human genome to create more mighty fighters. Stronger soldiers, faster soldiers, better performance on every front. If China and other countries are doing it, you can bet the US is trying to develop something similar. The CIA tried to create a legion of psychic soldiers during secret projects in the 1950s. If there are super soldiers to be made, you know America won't be the last ones on the dance floor. It's unclear how these humans might be being modified. Scientists have suggested Chinese researchers are using CRISPR to edit genes. But there could be a much more sophisticated technology the public doesn't even know about yet. Maybe Jason Bourne was real. How do you feel about the idea of super soldiers? Let me know in the comments! Number 6. FEMA Camps The FEMA Camps conspiracy theory is only a theory and should be taken with a grain of salt. The theory states that FEMA, the U.S. Federal Emergency Management Agency, is preparing for an eventuality in which a massive number of U.S. citizens will be imprisoned in concentration camps. This will be after martial law is imposed following a disaster or a crisis of some sort. It could be a natural disaster, or it could be a threat from another nation. The theory claims that FEMA has been secretly setting up camps all across the country. 
The camps will be used to house their own citizens. Those imprisoned inside the camps will likely be exterminated as the New World Order is created. It definitely sounds like the plot for a dystopian story like The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood or something like that. Not everyone will be sent to these camps, it will be mostly dissidents, meaning people who don't support the government. Those who have been outspoken on social media, those who didn't vote for the ruling party, those are the kinds of people who will be dragged away to the FEMA camps and exterminated. There isn't any proof that any of this is real, although it is true that the US government used concentration camps during World War II on their own Japanese-American citizens. They didn't plan to mass exterminate anyone, but they did trap their own in camps. Following the recent pandemic, conspiracy theorists have started talking about the FEMA camps again. Many believe that forcing almost 9 billion people to stay home for two years was the first test of the New World Order, something that COVID was carefully orchestrated by the One World Government to see how easy it would be to round up citizens into camps. While concentration camps did exist in the United States, it's not something you learn about in the history books but it does seem very unlikely that it will happen anytime soon. Do you think there's any truth to these theories? Let me know in the comments. Pretty scary stuff. Number 5. Project Sunshine Project Sunshine was not a hypothetical thing. It was a very real secret study carried out on the effects of radioactive fallout. It involved stealing bodies from graves throughout the United States and Great Britain. It was body-snatching mania in the 1950s, and the world is only now starting to learn about it. The whole point of Project Sunshine was to learn more about the effects of radioactive strontium-90. The issue people have with the study is that the government used infants that recently passed away in their tests. A bombshell accusation was dropped in a British newspaper saying how scientists took children's bodies from hospitals. They then shipped them to laboratories in the United States for nuclear experiments. The Australian Ministry for Health and Aged Care launched their own investigation into the matter in 2001 after learning about the covert nuclear tests. Michael Wooldridge, the Australian health minister at the time, said they would find out if Australian babies were also being shipped to the United States and used in experimentation. It's been over 20 years since Project Sunshine leaked, now the world knows about how over 1,500 cadavers were gathered from half a dozen countries in the 1950s. Those remains were then studied by the Atomic Energy Commission. The commission is now defunct. Documents released by President Clinton show that the scientists involved were aware of the dubious ethics involved but continued anyway. It was the only way they saw to figure out the complexities of radioactive material when exposed to human bone. The study itself was harmless science, but the body snatching was messed up. A report from ABC News showed the body snatchers specifically targeted low-income areas in Canada, Britain, and the US. Scientists thought it would be easy to get away with young corpses for their experiments in poor neighborhoods. Number 4. The Shark Spy Julia Child is remembered as a lover of French cooking and a great TV chef. But before Julia Child executed recipes on camera, she worked as a secret government spy. Julia was part of the intelligence agency that existed in the US prior to the CIA. It was during Julia's spy career that she came up with her first truly special recipe. Julia created shark repellent that could be applied to explosives and life jackets. Julia was born in 1912 in Pasadena, California. Her father was a banker and her mother was the heiress of the Weston Paper Company of Massachusetts. Julia grew up in a very posh and privileged environment. After college, she worked as a secretary for W.J. Sloan in New York City. With the dawn of World War II, Julia turned to the military. She volunteered with the Pasadena chapter of the American Red Cross and the Aircraft Warning Service. Through hard work and determination, Julia landed a gig as a research assistant for secret intelligence. Her career eventually led her to the emergency sea rescue equipment section. That was when she brilliantly came up with the recipe for the shark repellent. U.S. naval officers had been attacked several times by sharks already in the war. Plus, sharks kept setting off explosives that were meant for enemy vessels. Julia's shark repellent worked to save lives. All these years later, 
Julian's shark repellent is used by space agencies so that when equipment from a rocket lands in the ocean, it won't be destroyed by curious sharks. Number 3. The CIA and UFOs an estimated 57% of American citizens believe in the existence of extraterrestrial beings. Former U.S. President Carter once claimed he saw a UFO, and so did Reagan. But is the United States government covering up the existence of alien beings? What does the government know about flying saucers that they aren't telling us? UFOs didn't become a big deal until 1947, with the emergence of the Cold War. It was in the late 1940s that the first modern batches of UFO sightings and reports started to pour in. The first one came in the U.S. on June 24, 1947. Kenneth Arnold was the famous first witness of something strange in the sky. He was a private pilot and a trusted businessman. Kenneth supposedly saw nine flying disks near Mount Rainier in Washington. He estimated they were traveling at speeds of over 1,000 miles per hour. UFOs started to become a big problem for the government. There were so many sightings that the government needed entire divisions just to keep track of what was happening. The Air Force established Project Saucer to collect data in 1948. In 1952, Project Blue Book was initiated as well and was used into the 1960s. But these organizations never learned that much. CIA officials in 1952 suggested the sightings of alien objects in the sky were related to midsummer madness. They simply thought people were crazy. Agency officials wrote in a 1950s report, there is a remote possibility that they may be interplanetary aircraft. But nothing ever became of the UFO phenomenon. The UFO issue is still alive and well. Videos are all over the internet of flying saucers. The CIA is supposedly keeping track of all of this, but no government has admitted that they know anything about aliens. One thing is aliens and another UFOs. Do you think they're lying to us? Do you think top government officials know about aliens but are keeping it a secret? A series of documents leaked in 1984 claiming that President Truman created a secret committee in 1947 to recover alien wreckage from Roswell. Could these documents be real? Or was Roswell nothing but a crashed weather balloon? Let me know your thoughts and theories in the comments. Number 2. Top Secret In 1774, the Continental Congress passed a resolution. The resolution said that the doors be kept shut during the time of business to keep the proceedings secret until the majority shall direct them to be made public. In other words, the 18th century American government passed the first resolution to keep things secret from the population at large. Secrets are very much cooked into the Constitution. Article 1, Section 5 reads, Congress will keep a journal of its proceedings and from time to time publish the same, accepting such parts as may in their judgment require secrecy. Again, the government was very clear from the beginning that they are allowed to keep secrets from everyone. Secrets truly took off in World War II. That was the beginning of secrecy protocols. Now we're in the 21st century and government officials produce an estimated 90 million classified documents per year. About three secret documents a second are made by government officials. But out of all of the ordinary secret documents, only a small portion are top secret. Those are the ones with all the juicy information. But how does the government decide what's an ordinary secret and what's top secret? It was all thanks to President Harry Truman's Executive Order 10290 in 1951. He added the top secret category to the system. There is ordinary confidential information which could theoretically cause damage to national security. Then there is secret information that can cause serious damage to national security. The very highest on the list is top secret which could be expected to cause exponentially grave damage to U.S. national security. Classified information is a dime a dozen. Anyone who's part of the FBI, CIA, or NSA has the opportunity to see classified intel. There are also 1.3 million American citizens who have clearance to top-secret information. That's around one out of every 350 people, which doesn't seem particularly special. I don't know, what do you think? It's no wonder things leak so much. That being said, there are supposedly a handful of ultra-top-secret documents restricted to only a few dozen people. These are called special intelligence documents, 
or special access programs. If there is any information on an alien race or an incoming calamity, it's in those very special documents. Number 1. The Flying Frog In 2013, NASA tried to launch a frog into space. Try might not be the right word. What really happened was that the Minotaur 5 rocket sent a frog flying into the air with incredible force. The unmanned Lady rocket was on its way to the moon when it blasted off the frog. The frog was seen on camera taking the biggest leap of its life near the wet swamps of the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia. The site has three cameras to watch the launch, and one of them captured the tiny frog with its arms and legs spread out as if it was in the middle of a giant jumping jack. NASA posted the bizarre picture on their Instagram account. Chris Perry, one of the scientists involved in the launch, told ABC News that when he and the team got back to the office, they were shocked. Nobody had anticipated that they would accidentally launch a frog as well. Chris said it was sad to see the frog go out like that. With the amount of fire and energy being spewed out of the rocket, Chris was fairly sure the frog met its end that day. The launch was so powerful it knocked over one of the cameras set up 150 feet away. The camera that was left standing, the one that captured the frog, was shooting at 6 frames per second. Chris said the frog was only in one of the photos, meaning it must have been moving pretty fast. The space frog isn't a government secret, but it is a sad and weird thing that happened at the Wallops facility. NASA employees tried to find the frog but couldn't. The rocket, Lady, was launched to circle the moon for 100 days and gather measurements of its atmosphere. Thanks for watching! What do you think is the wildest thing the government is hiding from us right now? Let me know in the comments below! Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and come back soon for more videos! See you next time! Bye!